of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Thursday morning. we got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you got a pretty calm market to kick things off. We have initial jobless claims out this morning. We'll get to that in a moment, but the market... Okay, pretty much taking it in stride. We get the S&Ps up by four points right now, trading at 42.92. NASDAQ 100, barely in the red by about 15 points, 14,533 of the Dow, catching a little bit of a bid, made it up to 34,551 overnight. The Dow actually within reach by the end of the next week, by the end of this week, I should say, in terms of maybe even today, you never know. But uh, all-time highs actually within reach when you're only about 500 points from that level. All-time highs in the future is 35,000. And we get the Russell trading higher as well, up by about a half a percent, 11 points in the positive at 2318. Bitcoin pulling back from the highs we had this week. We're off about $3,000 off those highs, trading at 33,580, down $1,100 on the session. How about crude, folks? My goodness, $76, $76.09 to be exact. We're up $2.50 just since where we were at about 1.30 a.m. this morning. Remarkable acceleration continues. You put up the daily, and man, talk about just positive prices. Green arrows, upward to the right it goes, $76.07. We're making recent highs in crude. Remarkable that we're at $33 back in November, let alone negative prices, right? In the back of April of last year. We jump around to gold, catching a bit. Gold, 1782. You see the acceleration we had the last couple days, gold getting down to 1750. We put it on a 15 minute, and there you see the acceleration Tuesday down to 1750. Yesterday, we finally catch a bid at about 10 a.m. this morning, and that bid is continuing up to 1782 right now for the price of gold. Don't forget, folks. Nice segue. The Gold Report going up on prices after this weekend. You can check that out on the front page of TFNN. We also have a Tiger Dollar sale going on through this weekend as well on the front page of TFNN. And we'll jump to notes and bonds. The 10-year, negative by two ticks. Pretty calm action right now. That's correlating to a yield as I bring it up. On the 10-year, 1.461%. 1.46, not bad. Part of the reason why you got the NASDAQ pushing basically all-time highs. Not basically, all-time highs, 14,606. Uh, very real that we see 15,000 in the NASDAQ 100 sometime in the near future if things continue as is. You put it on a daily, right? I mean, this is quite an uptrend channel we got happening from November. We're even going to back it up a little bit further on the NASDAQ 100. Um, let's just see where this lines up. Not really going to extend too correlated. It doesn't. But if you put this on the chart, I'm going to cancel the left extension here. I'm going to cancel it as well up top. I'm going to look at where we are. I'm going to put it back on a daily. Pretty defined channel line in the NASDAQ 100, the upper boundary. Now, again, you back it up, right? That is correlating when you draw it to the left. Pretty nice action when you line up from September to the highs of February. That would bring us above 15,000, folks. And you see the lows lining up from the beginning of the run in November. We pull back on March 5th. We pull back in the middle of May. And since then, we take off. You were under 13,000 as recent as May 19th. We're talking about 1,500 points from that price level. All right, jumping around, what else we got going on? As I mentioned, initial jobless claims, 364,000, decreasing by 51,000 for the week. Market was looking for about 388. Yes, 388 market was looking for. That is a pandemic low. We have some states ending the additional benefits. Uh, that contributing to things. Some of the states that ended it, uh, one in particular, maybe it was Iowa. We'll pull it up later in the show. Um, actually adding people even though those benefits going away so a little bit of a mixed signal in there nonetheless we get that number ahead of the non-farm payroll number tomorrow morning 23 and a half hours from right now 8 30 a.m market probably looking to wait uh for some action there we'll see if we get ahead of it in terms of action coming into the long weekend we get quite a data point on friday morning coming into closed on monday july 5th for the july 4th holiday all right, jumping around to what we got going on. It is earnings season still. Walgreens shrinks to a profit, raises forecast as it looks to accelerate growth under their new CEO. That's how they put it. Um, 
Shares are trading higher today. They're the numbers. $1.51 versus $1.17. They beat with $34.03 billion versus $33.76. Net profit, $1.2 billion, um, 138 a share compared with a net loss. Sales rose to $34.03 billion. In the front of the store, comp retail sales rising 1.7% compared to a year ago quarter. Really tough to compare the years ago. Nonetheless, you jump over Walgreens. Ooh, I was going to say higher. What's going on on that conference call? Walgreens actually lower. I'm guessing it has to do with the forecast, folks. Maybe it has to do with rising uh, input prices, the common theme going on. But nonetheless, they beat up to 54.65. Looks like you're going to open in the red for Walgreens this morning. Uh, negative to about 52. You pull up the chart on this thing. Uh, been quite a rocket ship from the lows of $33 back in November. But you were looking. We're not even back to where we were at the beginning of 2020 for Walgreens. Quite a decline from 86.31 down to $33. Uh, catching a little bit of a bid. We're going to open slightly in the red this morning on their numbers. All right, what else we got going on? How about crude? So let's talk about that before we get into some of the equities that are moving today. Uh, highest prices since 2018, a relentless acceleration to the upside. Folks, if you don't get a chance to uh, check out the interview we do at 40 past the hour of my program on Wednesdays with Teddy Kegstat from forex-trading-unlock.com. Didn't talk a lot about uh, crude in yesterday's interview in particular, but if you're into Forex at all, folks, you can find it at our YouTube channel. You just go under videos. Everything we do, we archive right at our YouTube channel. Just search TFNN within YouTube. I encourage you to subscribe to our channel completely free. You get updates when we publish, whether it's video archives, our streams go live, etc. cetera. Uh, check that out on Forex. But Teddy, he's been talking about $100 oil lately, and it looks like this thing is not slowing down anytime soon, folks. You pull up crude, and my goodness, that's a three-year weekly. You consolidate from basically June all the way into November of last year. You take off with the economy in the beginning of June. We get efficacy numbers for the vaccines. The world's gonna open back up. We trade from 33 to 75. Now look at where we're at, all right? You're coming right up to this high that we had back in 2018. You put this on a five-year weekly. That is the high, folks. Seems all but natural that we touch it. That's about a dollar above where we're trading at right now, 76.90 on the futures. Uh, see if we run into any resistance on that level. Then you got to back it up much further beyond that, right? And where's the next stop? Next stop's over $100, folks. We get above this level. I mean, look at that chart, right? Remarkable acceleration. And out of curiosity, let's just see what kind of a Fibonacci number we're dealing with here in terms of the full. We're going back to 2014 prices. You get a pullback. Yeah, nothing too dramatic. We're already above the 618 in the entire move in terms of trading from about 110 down to $6. Things really get skewed when you have this type of move. Um, that is the rolling price. I mean, if you remember, right, we had April contracts closing out at, I think it was negative $38 a contract, something silly, when we all got a lesson in uh, how futures prices traded. And you actually have to pay somebody sometimes to take oil. Can you imagine that getting paid for the people who set that trade up, right? And there were stories about it. They got paid. To, to be sent barrels of crude oil, that all they had to do was be able to store it or hold it, and you sell it in the future, um, getting paid $40 a barrel, a drum, to hold oil that you can sell for right now, $70. So you were getting paid $40 for a product that you were gonna be able to then get paid $70 in the future to be able to sell. But we all know, not that simple. There was no place to store it in the whole world practically. And nonetheless, uh, interesting things happening as the market became a little dislocated back in April at the beginning of the shutdown of everything going on. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got the S&Ps up by five, NASDAQ 100, negative by 12. We'll be coming back talking to our man Kevin Hinks from Fast Market on the TD Ameritrade Network. We'll be talking markets, we'll be talking options. Stay tuned, folks, we'll be right back. Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world. Represented in the Fibonacci sequence, these special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free 
All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Hey there, I'm Andy Arbertine with Tiger Precious Metals and Stones. Whether you're looking to buy and sell precious metals or trying to find the perfect diamond ring, I'm here to help. I have over 15 years of experience with diamonds and precious metals. You can call me directly at 727-329-8245 and I will personally answer any questions you have and help you find exactly what you're looking for. I will be your personal concierge in the metal and stone business. Give me a call today, 727-329-8245. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps right now up by about six points. Uh, we have the NASDAQ 100 down by 10. We have the Dow positive by 78 points. Jumping around to what else we have going on, folks. Jumping around to the VIX uh, right now. And do I have uh, our man Kevin on the line? I'm not sure. They can let me know there. One of our producers. Uh, jumping over to the VIX. we got the VIX right now trading down 1559 as this market continues higher. Okay, we're just waiting for them. It's a busy morning, folks. we got jobless claims numbers out there uh, at 360,000 instead of 380. Uh, jumping around. Crude up $2.37, 75.83. And let's jump to the other equities that are moving this morning. Stops making moves. We covered Walgreens quite the quarter, but they're playing uh, trading lower this morning. CureVac, German drug maker, final study analysis showed COVID vaccine 48% effective. Little change from their 47% shares trading lower. Not surprising. I mean, it's just a reminder of how fortunate we are that these vaccines that we have really came in. You're seeing a lot of great companies out there pretty much uh, not really putting up numbers. I mean, if you remember, the number that they were looking for, they wouldn't even use anything below 50%. And 50% would have been, I mean, we see the cases are still persisting, especially in Florida, when we get vaccines out there that are 90 to 95% effective. Uh, McCormick. The spices, I got some McCormick in my uh, cabinet. Beat estimates by seven cents a, year, a share, 69 cents. Condiment and spice maker reported better than expected revenue and they raised the full year forecast. That's the one I was waiting for for this. We all know in the last year we were all stocking up on spices, cooking a bunch of good food, uh, helped by elevated at-home demand and rebound the company's commercial business. But to raise the full year forecast, as in it's not going to pull back. They're going to be selling those spices in a big way going forward. Trends probably changing. And just like that, though, we give it back a little bit on that stock. Still, nonetheless, you take a look at this thing. You accelerated from 56 up to 105. You came into COVID at about 85. You're sitting at about 88 on McCormick this morning. All right, folks, let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, Kevin Hinks, Alex Goffey, the team at TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market. They break down the market action. They break down what's going on, uh, options, defined risk, folks. We know the type of volatility this market's capable of. We got the S&P pushing all-time highs almost on a daily basis right now. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Happy Thursday. Uh, Happy you know, good, solid Non-farm or uh, unemployment number today with uh, first-time filers for unemployment insurance. Think about this, Tommy. At 364,000, we're about 140,000 jobs away from being 
a good, solid, healthy labor market in terms of unemployment. So that's a good number for some high-frequency data. You know, that number had stalled up around 400,000 for a couple weeks. And uh, so that's a good, solid number. And so it's first day of the quarter, and if you're a baseball fan or a New Yorker, it's Bobby Bonilla Day, Tommy. <laughs> what year does that go out to, Kevin? Is it 2040? Something bananas, man. 2035. Uh, 2035. I was that close. That is an unbelievable story. Everyone should go look that up and read it. And you know what that is? The owner of the Mets thought he could pay deferred salary with 8%. You know why? Because Bernie Madoff was promising him 10% on his yeah. money. A little bit of hijinks in there when I read through that one, man. You know, we're all bright individuals, uh, yeah. you know, thinking that you can get guaranteed money, Kevin, right, at a rate higher yeah, than the market exactly. had it. We all know how that one plays out, um, and it's not a surprise, folks. Anyone guarantees your rate guaranteed higher than the market, and they say there's no risk, uh, tell them to watch Fast Market because that just ain't honest. happening. <laughs> exactly. So, Kevin, They're we got the jobs number. Of course, we get non-farm payrolls tomorrow. Um, yeah. You made a great point. You brought it up before. I've been talking to people since you mentioned it, that a healthy economy, you're talking about 200 to 250,000 jobs on a weekly basis just in the churn of things is happening. So we're almost at that level. We wait for the right. number tomorrow. Then we go for the long weekend. Uh, you talked about earlier in the week uh, the wage numbers that we might get tomorrow as well. Uh, when you look at the jobs number versus the wages number, Kevin, do you see both of those having an impact? Are you really just looking at the wage data? Are you just waiting for the long weekend? you think it's going to shake it off no matter what happens as we wait tomorrow morning? Well, obviously, you don't want a massively disappointing number like, frankly, a couple of the last have had. And the ADP number was a good, solid number. So we're, you know, but that being said, the wages data within that non-farm payroll number, which is expected to be 0.4 after last month being up 0.5, that will show some inflation, but maybe an inflation level that's starting to decrease slightly. So that is um, something that people will take favor in if it comes in around that 0.4 or a little bit lower. So, yeah, the, way, the wages data, that's what's going to affect the bond market. The overall number is going to affect, you know, the stock market as well. So, you know, here's what I tell people when it comes to non-farm payrolls, Tommy. It doesn't always move the stock market, but it always moves the bond market, always. So, and w w that that will in turn move the stock market if, if we see inflation start, start to spike here. So as that's always what's out there. That being said, if it's a benign number that doesn't scare the market in either direction, Everyone will be turning their computers off and heading towards somewhere to have a little more fun, Tommy. That's right, baby. It's July 4th coming down the line, and uh, it is interesting, man. This S&P, I got a chart up on the Thinkorswim platform. We had the day to negative territory June 18th, so we wrap up June uh, yesterday. Since then, Kevin, you're talking about, I think I got eight out of nine days are in the green right now, including today's bar, as we're positive by six points, kind of a melt upward as we wait for a pretty important data point right now. We get some jobs to make up and in the inflationary conversation, but the market seems Seems to at least be saying since that uh, Friday one week ago that it's kind of comfortable right now, in my opinion. So we got some earnings uh, still coming out, Kevin, as we wait. Uh, we get some market action coming in. What are you guys going to be spending the hour talking about coming up at 11 o'clock? Today, we're going to go. We're, we're going to touch that third rail and we're going to talk about AMC and GameStop today. So uh -oh. like Bully uh -oh. is going to do presentation <laughs> on what try to make sense of what's going on in those two names. So, you know, we we entertain ourselves before we get to chew on some nice earnings with some of the high-flying names and some of the names that are in the news. Well, these two are certainly one of them. Tommy. Kevin, I was saying yesterday on the show that, uh, folks, I like to, I, I like an expression and a term that says uh, a probability, if it's greater than zero of occurring, you better realize, folks, that it can happen. And sometimes we dismiss small probabilities. And it's just remarkable, Kevin, where these stocks have kind of settled almost. You got GameStop right. settling at 214, and you got AMC settling at 56. I think we all thought... Um, I mean, the original run on AMC pushed it up to 20 bucks before it got back down to $5 and change. Just remarkable acceleration, man. My friends and I are talking about it's taking everybody by storm, even outside of kind of the professional trader, 
you know, recreational trader. Now it's a retail trader, recreational. You can be in there. Um, but remarkable levels. We look forward to the conversation as always and the education. And we're not going to talk to you until the 4th, man. So we'll talk to you July 6th next Tuesday, Kevin. You have yourself a great long weekend, man. And we look forward to the show coming up. Have a great weekend, Tommy. Say hello to your family. I sure will, man. You as well. Folks, tune in 11 o'clock every trading day. Outstanding program. Kevin Hinks, Alex Coffey, and the team. The experience, the way they break things down. I learn something all the time from that program. It's an outstanding show. Uh, and the best way to learn stuff, folks, is to go through and, and, and be, you know, practicing in in real time in terms of they're setting up trades in real time they're rolling them in real time if you have if you're not familiar with options they can be a little bit intimidating but i encourage you to check out the program you can always trade with paper money create a demo account if you like on the thinkorswim platform head on over to the front page of tfnn download a demo account thinkorswim td ameritrade an outstanding sponsor of tfnn's for going on a long time now supporting what we do but i would use them anyway folks i know i'm biased but it's just an outstanding platform especially if you're trading options check it out on the front page of tfnn we'll be right back for the market open folks stay tuned are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors Tom O'Brien has just published his 1,000th gold report. It's amazing to think that Tom has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 20 years. To celebrate the 1,000th issue of Tom O'Brien's gold report, we've just launched a Tiger Dollar sale, which runs for two weeks only through July 4th weekend. We've doubled all the Tiger Dollar bonuses, where you can now get up to a 40% bonus on your purchase. But that's not all. Inflation is here, and the price of the gold report is going up after July 4th. Right now, you can lock in the Gold Report at the current pricing of $97 a month for as long as you remain a subscriber. This deal won't come around again. Get your Tiger Dollars today and apply them to the Gold Report before the price goes up on July 5th. Tiger Dollars never expire and are good for any TFNN newsletter or service as a great way to add savings. Head on over to the front page of TFNN.com for all the details and help us celebrate Tom O'Brien's 1000th Gold Report. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get markets open. We get the S&P positive by five to kick things off. We make a high in the overnight session. Right now, you're positive by five points. That's an all-time high print trading, 42.94 in the S&Ps. 
You get the Dow right now up 78 points, 34,483. NASDAQ 100 makes a uh, high in the overnight session as well, 14,606. We backed off a bit down about We'll call it tenth of a percent. That's like nothing in the NASDAQ 100. And the Russell catching a little bit of a bid. Russell's only about 45 points from all-time highs, 23.21. You see the Russell, right? This is just kind of bumping right up against this high area. We've been pumping up against that area since February 10th. Uh, remarkable when you look at that in terms of where we are. Crude, $76, we'll call it. We're trading $75.95. And let's jump around to other equities with action today so far. Uh, stocks making moves. There we go. So Micron, I want to cover. They're out with their numbers. They beat estimates by 16 cents a share. Earnings of $1.88. Revenue topping forecasts as well. Upbeat current quarter guidance with a shortage of chips and strong demand keeping prices high. Separately, they sold a Utah semiconductor factory to Texas Instruments for 900 million cash. So did you just hear everything I listed? <laughs> and Micron is negative this morning, folks. Not living up to expectations to the tune of 4.7%. All right, you accelerate lower and you accelerate lower right out of the gate too on this equity. Uh, yeah, you almost can't deliver, but guess what? The market was looking for more um, in terms of that equity. Now you put this thing on a daily going back and the market might have been looking for more because you just traded from 50 to 95 in this equity. A little bit more priced in potentially than we were, but nonetheless, we're only down, folks, from where we were trading at. Uh, yeah, is that Monday? No, last Friday. So a week ago is where we're at. Boeing's got a new CFO in there. Elliott Management has taken a stake in GlaxoSmithKline. Yeah, okay. Jumping back to the weekly jobless claims number. So quite a trend to downward prices. You know, Kevin stated it. We're talking about a healthy economy. You're churning 200 to 250,000. Now, the argument could be made that you might have an expectation as things are really rocking, right, that you get less numbers. There's less initial claims than even in a healthy economy of 200 to 250,000 because you might have less people getting laid off as the economy is roaring back with growth. But nonetheless, we're at a low that is a pandemic low of 366. Uh, we're looking for non-farm payrolls that are going to show a number of 706,000 for the month of June. That number tomorrow is the expectation. May's was 559 and a decrease in the unemployment rate to 5.6%. Despite the drop in weekly claims, the level of continuing claims increased to 3.47 million, up 56,000 from the prior week. However, that data runs a week behind, so 3.47. And then here's the number I wanted to get to. The total of those receiving benefits through all programs fell by 180,000 to 14.66 million, according to data that runs two weeks behind, okay? Uh, the biggest drop, 86,000, came from those receiving extended benefits. But my goodness, folks, you're talking about 14.66 million and they're sparsing 86,817. Uh, remarkable there in terms of what's going on. All right, what else we got? Let's jump to Tesla. Tesla's second quarter deliveries could clear 200,000 and set the record. That's the story that Bloomberg's got up there this morning. That'd be a milestone for the electric car maker, led by Mr. Elon Musk. Deliveries are the one of the most closely watched indicators at Tesla, rightfully so. They underpin its financial results. They're widely seen as a barometer of the consumer demand. Uh, this is still a massive growth company, so they're looking for deliveries. deliveries. Uh, 11 analysts surveyed. Expect Tesla to report deliveries of 204,160 in the second quarter. They sell vehicles right up until midnight on the last day of the period, which ended Wednesday. The company could announce production and delivery figures as soon as tomorrow. It delivered a record 184,800. So look for that number. Tesla, a little bit of volatility coming down the line. Uh, chip shortages, logistics, freight issues, which could have translated into roughly 10,000 cars currently in transit globally. That's Dan Ives, notable analyst at Webbush, talking about in a client's Wednesday deliveries of Model 3 Y in the range of 195,000 will be viewed as positive for this quarter. Uh, they make the Model S and X at the factory in Fremont, Fremont, while the smaller Model 3 and Y assembled both there and at the plant in Shanghai. Uh, Tesla shares jumping over. And with that, we get the markets higher, folks. We got tech stocks back in the green. Didn't take long. Let's put it back on a short term. Look at this acceleration. It just don't stop. The S&P is up by eight points at 42.97. The Dow is up 25. Russell's up by 11, jumping over two Tesla shares. We're positive by about eight tenths percent.
putting it on a daily. Tesla, a little bit of a rebound from those lows we had at 545. You were up at 900. Maybe a little bit of a consolidation between about 600 and 700 going on since really we pulled back on February 22nd. Jumping back to Bitcoin, 33,755. We'll take a look at Coinbase. Coinbase back above their reference price of 251.52. And let's see how some of those FANG stocks are opening up with the NASDAQ 100 in the positive. We got the Am we have Amazon, the king dog, up a quarter percent. Uh, biggest company out there, Apple, down by a quarter percent. Microsoft joining the two trillion mark this week, down about two tenths percent. Facebook shares having quite a week on Monday. But man, how about this? It gave almost it all back right, to 344. Talk about a little premature exuberance, maybe. The market trades up to 358. And since then, we've gave it up in a big way. We're down to about 348. We're popping this morning, but still negative action in Facebook on the heels of that. And we'll jump to some of the other social media. Twitter, uh, down about a tenth of a percent right now. Snapchat, positive by a tenth. Let's jump around to some of the cruise lines. So we got Carnival. Talk about some volatility here and some of the cruise ships. Um, Carnival, back to this breakout area that it had. Well, really the breakout's about 20, but you came into this consolidation almost from about 26 to 30. You're nearing the bottom part of that. You might make an argument the bottom part of that's about 24 on Carnival. Royal Caribbean, 86 from that high of 99. You jumped to some of the airlines. United purchasing 270 planes, uh, 200 from Boeing, I believe 70 from Airbus. They're up about 1.3%. I mean, these are getting the bounce, but boy, they spent some devastating prices in terms of if you get into these, you know, at 60 bucks, you just gave up $7. $7. You just gave up 11, 12% just since where you got into this thing in a one month period for United. Delta Airlines trading at 43. We had domestically JetBlue Airlines. Yeah, quite a pullback on some of these. I was talking to my dad about this yesterday. Um, you know, you get up to 22, you're down to 17, you give up $5. You're talking about 20, what, 22, 23%. We're off the highs in JetBlue. You back it up to pre-COVID. You're now below where we were prior to COVID. And you're actually in the lower boundary line of anywhere we were in the last three years. You back it up to a five-year weekly. And you can see, I mean, we're yesterday's low. All right, or well, the weekly low, I should say, is pretty much the lower boundary line where we were when you go back to 2019 towards the end of 2018 on JetBlue. We'll pull up Southwest, also domestic, not quite back down to those same bouncing areas of the lows, but nonetheless from 65 to 53 and Southwest also below where we were prior to COVID. Kind of tough on a fundamental perspective. Uh, they still have to ramp up, I'm sure, the number of routes, you know, the number of planes, the number of availability. But man, ticket prices, they are just through the roof and they're gonna be through the roof, I imagine, folks, for like the next year, at least, right? I mean, check out Airbnb the last couple of days, all right? Now that's a daily. This thing accelerating over anywhere we traded at over about the last two months, okay? And look at the daily run this thing had over the last couple of days, it's catching a bit again today, up 2.5%. You were down to 144 yesterday. You had a pullback on some of the fears, maybe pulling back in the travel, but this thing just accelerated, folks. You're talking about $13 from the lows yesterday. Even from the open, you're up $12. It's like an 8% acceleration on Airbnb. Now, yeah, this thing really got ahead of itself to 219. But after their earnings coming out on May 10th, we're talking about trading from about 132 to 157 with travel opening them back up for the foreseeable future. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
Paperbyte's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps positive by 8, 42.96 right now. Let's jump over to the volatility index. We get the VIX right now. We had a 15 handle. We show our 15.71 as we come into potentially that long weekend. We're waiting for the 8.30 number tomorrow. Non-farm payrolls. We get some wage data. It'll be interesting to see. I think Kevin Hicks, Kevin Hinks put it well, um, saying if it's a nothing number, you might be turning off your computer and heading for the weekend, if possible. If we get a miss, though, uh, potential to move interest rates, potential to move notes and bonds, depending on the wage data, inflationary data. I would be looking at the inflationary data for a little bit more of potential miss driving some market action. We get a miss on the jobs number. We've gotten misses on the jobs number. Um, market isn't worried about making up the jobs too quickly to cause the Fed to taper. The market is worried about inflation being non-transitory, causing the Fed to taper, right? We're, we're late to the party on making the jobs up. The last two months uh, were big misses in terms of the expectations for the jobs to be added. We still got to make up 8 million jobs. Chairman Powell's talked about that number to reach full employment, two mandates, right? Full employment, stable prices. They got a long way to go for full employment. We'll see how far, how much room they have to wiggle around with stimulus while maintaining that stable prices in the long term is what is happening and only transitory is inflation. So that would be my look in terms of where that inflationary data uh, is and if it causes any hiccups over there. Speaking of hiccups, just something to keep your eye on in terms of uh, Xi. Uh, warning ch China's foes will break against steel great wall. Uh, you know, interesting here, of course, this going on, talking about uh, unification with Taiwan, a historic mission for the party, highlighting progress towards prosperous, strong nation. The party's 100-year uh, anniversary, calling China's quest to gain control of Taiwan a historic mission, warning the country's adversaries, adversaries to avoid standing in the way of his government. I have to chuckle a little bit, folks. It's just... Uh, Man, China, they, they got a long plan, and they ain't backing down. You see with Hong Kong, um, not even close. They ain't, they ain't taking any guff over there. And uh, hopefully uh, this will be not something that upsets things in, in over, you know, some pretty important stuff to China over there. It's almost, uh, you know, you can't understate the risk there because China is not backing down, and hopefully nothing ever gets to the point um, of force being used there. But she called the movement to unify China and Taiwan an unshakable commitment and vowed resolute action to utterly defeat any ta any attempt toward Taiwan independence. I mean, um, 
It's a tough one, and I imagine tensions, unfortunately, may ratchet up. you got Taiwan, of course, lashing out at Beijing after China president pledges complete reunification. All right? Not not high-level stuff in terms of seeing how, how you know, um, tensions rising in the region, with Xi talking about complete reunification and Taiwan's mainland affairs council acknowledging the Chinese Communist Party had achieved economic development, but added that it was clamped down on democracy, violated human rights, and grown more dictatorial. Uh, I would agree there, as many would most. Uh, they said the Taiwanese government remains determined to defend the island's sovereignty and democracy while urging Beijing to abandon military intimidation toward the island. Pretty strong words in a big way, folks. Uh, other stories out there. We got automakers. They're going to report the second quarter vehicle sales today. We were talking about Tesla, what they'll be looking for. Uh, an analyst estimate automakers sold about 4.5 million vehicles in the U.S. in the second quarter. They talk about a comp versus a year ago, but not really comparable when you think about who was buying a car in the second quarter of 2020. The chip shortage causing automakers to significantly cut vehicle production, leading to tighter inventories on the dealer lots. So they'll be looking about 4.5 and you got Tesla in there. Going to be about 200,000 of the pack um, yeah, so that's out today. Lumber prices finally pulling back. How about to the tune of 40%, the biggest monthly drop on record. All the talk was lumber prices, right? Things don't go up forever and they don't go down forever, folks. When you get some crazy levels, uh, then you get some crazy pullbacks. We got lumber tanking 40% in June, worst month on record, uh, down more than 18% in 2021 and headed for the first negative first half since 2015. So this was out there yesterday morning, but that's how it finished, folks, um, as lumber prices. And this is this will be what the Fed it loves to talk about right now, and maybe rightfully so. This would be data that backs up that prices are transitory, that are going right now, whether it's input prices, lumber prices, contributing to housing prices, whether it's, my goodness, some of the commodity prices, the crude prices, as we're back above $76 in the price of crude this morning. You got gold up about $8 at $17.80. Uh, silver prices with some strength for sure, up about 12 pennies, made it to $26.52 yesterday. You're trading at about $26.31 so far this morning. And the yield right now, we're talking about 1.45%, jumping over to that 10-year, because that Kevin puts it as well. We've risen a bit. We were trading at 132.08, folks, at 8 in the morning when I was getting ready to do my show. We've now risen another six ticks as this market just spells lower prices, uh, excuse me, lower yields, which is causing a bid and everything right now. We got the S&Ps at 4,300, folks. We got the NASDAQ 100 pushing 14,562. Remarkable acceleration across the board. All right, what else we got going on? How about a TFNN, folks? Now, we got a few things going on here. Uh, I talked about we got a Tiger Dollar sale going on through this weekend, all right? It's Thursday, folks. It's happening. Now's the time to make it happen. Tiger Dollar sale going through this weekend. You can get up to a 40% bonus on your purchase. If you've never used Tiger Dollars, folks, you can use it for any newsletter, any service. Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien, Larry Pezzavento. Uh, Basil Chapman's got an exciting announcement coming up. He's going to have an exciting announcement with the course coming up as well. All the live courses that we do, all day webinars that we do, they're all things that you can use Tiger Dollars for to add savings. I encourage you to check that out. And then we got the gold report. The price is going up on Tuesday, July 6th. Uh, end of July 4th weekend, they'll be going up. You can lock in the current rate. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee as a new subscription, and you lock in that rate forever, folks. And then, pretty cool. So yesterday, Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, he is hosting an event at the Ritz-Carlton in Miami, Florida. It's an in-person event, folks. All right? And I know we have to recalibrate our brains because uh, we're not used to it. In-person event. Steve's going to be hosting for Taz Market Profile. Uh, He's going to be over in Miami Friday, July 23rd, all right, as part of our relationship with Taz, sponsorship. He's got a limited amount of seats available to TFNN listeners, and you can sign up for this completely for free, folks. Uh, it's, it's going to be an, an awesome event. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to make it. I'm going to try to. It's Friday, July 23rd. But nonetheless, it's Steve's event. He's putting it on, okay? But right now, you can sign up by using the promo code TFNN Sponsor. It is one word, all caps, okay? He's a character, man. Gotta love him. He's gonna be over there, all right? Completely free with an affiliate promo code. So the way you do it, folks, the front page of TFNN, you hit reserve my ticket, you come on over to the page, you're gonna enter the promo code. Okay, have a promo code. Capital letters is key here. TFNN, sponsor, one word, Hit the apply, and instead of 997, it's free, folks. 
there's no catch. Go there. Have a great time. I think it's 7.30 till 4.30, the hours that's going on on Friday. Uh, he's got some giveaways. He's got a $1,000 ugly Hawaiian shirt giveaway. I think he's got a $10,000 package of Taz indicators and profiles that they'll be giving away. Please only sign up if you plan on going, folks. Now, you do need to enter your credit card, all right? So we just don't have a ton of people putting their names and their email addresses in there. It's a live event. Steve needs an accurate count of the people that are going to be there at a minimum as he's giving away seats to TFNN listeners that he's charging $1,000 for almost. Make sure you enter the promo code. Make sure you see it say free. All right? Put in your information. You will need a credit card. You'll be charged nothing. You're not signing up for anything recurring. That'll be a great event in Miami, and kudos to Steve for putting that on and inviting some tigers and tigresses out there. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back after the break. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave. Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, without them, life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got a little bit of volatility going on with the NASDAQ 100 back in the red, 14,536. S&P's at 4,298. Taking a look at the Fibonacci on a short-term basis. We got five-minute bars going on right there, sitting right at about a 618 of the run we had from 4,305 down to 4,286 at about 7 a.m. this morning. We're up right now to 4,298. That's about a 618 retracement of that move to negative prices this morning. Talk about Europe, the DAX. Up about a quarter percent. FTSE up a full percent this morning over in Asia. Nikkei down three tenths percent. Shanghai basically flat this morning. We'll jump around to some of the FANG stocks as we wrap up the hour. Amazon basically flat, oscillating a bit. We got Microsoft shares 
right now down two tenths of percent. Taking a look at some of the companies with earnings, Walgreens, quite the haircut. You're down six percent right now on their numbers to 49.45. Talked about Micron as well. Man, some high expectations for some of these equities. Some pretty strong numbers. You got Micron and Walgreens down five to six percent so far on their numbers this morning. McCormick catching a little bit of a bid. Is that McCormick? No, that's McKesson. MKC, MKC. Not MCK. McCormick basically down nine tenths. And what else we get? We get Krispy Kreme's going to be trading today, folks. Let me pull up that article. Uh, Krispy Kreme. So they raise 500 million bucks. They they sell almost 30 million shares at $17 each. Though they were looking to raise money at 21 to 24. Looks like the market not valuing donuts the way that they had hoped. Puts the company at about 2.7 billion dollars. Still a decent number. But man, you think about the iconic brand, right? You say Krispy Kreme donuts. Everybody pretty much knows what you're talking about. And barely, they're a $2 billion company. I say barely, but in context of what companies push these days, a small number and below what they were looking at um, for themselves. Speaking of IPOs, D Diddy trading higher today by about 12.4% after going public yesterday. You could say a little bit of a dismal showing, going from 18 to 14. Uber, one of the stocks in my newsletter, trading a little bit higher because of their stake in Diddy. Uh, they seeded, they seeded, the land to Didi in China as they gave up their venture in China. They took a stake in Didi. Uh, that risen to about eight nine billion dollars they get a decent stake i think it's about 12 14 percent of diddy that they own uber uber up about two percent on that acceleration this morning all right folks stay tuned we got our man basil chapman he's coming up live next fast market at 11 larry pezzavento at noon steve rhodes dave white tom o'brien all this afternoon thanks so much for starting your day with me folks stay tuned we got basil he's coming up live right now building wealth trading in the stock